When we think about disability discrimination, we think about an employer failing to accommodate, for example, a person who is blind and need special treatment, don't we? But did you know that an employer can discriminate against an employee based on the employer's perceived notion that the employee is disabled? whether the employee is disabled or not. Did you know that? Well, you want to hear this. So let's get started. The American with Disability Act defines a person with a disability as someone with a physical or mental impairment that substantially limits a major life activity, has a record of such an impairment, or is regarded, now hone in on that word, regarded, as having such an impairment. And you can find the original act at 42 U.S.C. section 12102. Now, so you know, the ADA Act of 1990 was expanded in the American with Disabilities Act Amendment Act of 2008. And the new amendment expanded the mental and physical impairments. The ADA states in part, no covered entity shall discriminate against a qualified individual on the basis of disability in regard to job application procedures, hiring, advancement, discharge of an employee, compensation, job training, and other terms, conditions, and privileges of employment. And you can read that at 42 USC section 12112. So as you can see, this discrimination can take form in other areas of employment other than firing an individual based on their disability or perceived disability. And we're going to get into that now. So, what happens when the employer discriminates against the employee based on his or her perception that the employee is disabled, whether or not it is true? To illustrate this point, we're going to look at case law. Babb versus Maryville Anesthesiology, PC. You can find that at 942 Federal 3rd, 308, and it is a 2019 case. And plaintiff worked at defendant company as a certified registered nurse anesthetist or C-R-N-A. She sued under the American with Disabilities Act Amendments Act of 2008. And the act, by the way, actually became in effect in 2009. In her complaint, plaintiff alleged that her employer erroneously believed that she was visually impaired and discriminated against her. The defendant argued plaintiff was fired because she had committed two clinical errors that placed the patients at 
grave risk of injury. Now, what is the defendant doing here? A couple of things should come to mind, but one in particular that jumps out at me, and it starts with a P as in Paul. You know what it is? Pretext. In other words, what the defendant is claiming here is really not the true reason for the termination. Actually, it's a cover up for the termination. And we'll hear from the appellate court on this issue of pretext. So the district court determined that the defendant had legitimately fired the plaintiff for the clinical errors and awarded summary judgment to the defendant. Well, the plaintiff appealed. And let's see what the appellate court had to say. The Sixth Circuit held that there were genuine disputes of material facts related to the defendant's perception of plaintiff's disability. Because remember now, when responding to the defendant's motion for summary judgment, all the plaintiff has to do is prove one genuine material fact. The appellate court stated that there were genuine issues that needed to be investigated concerning whether the firing was in fact a pretext discrimination on the basis of the perception of impairment. So all the plaintiff had to show was perception perception of impairment. Now that's powerful. And remember, you can prove pretext with direct evidence and indirect evidence or circumstantial evidence. Keep that in mind. Hey guys, I hope this was helpful to you and we'll see you next time on Advocate Lucinda, your empowerment lawyer. Take care.